In today's session, we're going to be looking at creating a program which um, randomly generates um, sums for our user to um, complete. So it'll randomly generate um, an initial number, it'll randomly ge generate whether it's a plus, minus, divide, whatever, and then it will randomly generate the second number as well. It will display that, um, which is fairly straightforward, it will display that, and then the user will have to put the answer in for that. Now, the interesting part of this program is the next function that we're going to use. It's called the evaluate function. And what that will do is that will look at the numbers and the operations selected, and it will work out the answer in the background so that we don't need to work it out ourselves with a load of if statements and save that somewhere else. It's just a quick way of um, evaluating a string and um, putting it into a uh, you know, whatever um, data type it needs to be, and then working out um, what it is exactly. And we'll, we'll talk it through as we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import random, because this um, is what we're going to be using to um, select our numbers and actually select whether we're going to use a plus, minus, times, or divide. We need to um, import some operations. So we are going to import um, these operations here. So we need the um, plus, minus, divide, and times. Oh, painfully typing slow this morning. So all of those are saved inside a list. So all of my operations are saved inside a list. So we now want the um, the initial number. So number one, so this is the first randomly generated number. So we use the random dot rand int that we looked at in a previous episode and we select what, um, what numbers we want to generate these from. So one, between one and 10, let's say. We now need the second number, so number two equals random or oh, dot rand int one and ten again. Let's just have it. Let's just have it set so it's exactly the same. So between one and ten again. Now we need another variable which will um, select one of these four operations. So we'll just call it a selection. And that equals a random choice of this list. So random uh, dot choice and the list that we're going to be looking at. So the OPS list, which is here at the top. So what we now need to do is we need to print this all together for our user to be able to look into. So if we um, printed these together, let's just do it like this. So print number one and then the um, selection and then number two and then we'll just do an equal sign at the end. So there we go, if I press F5 now and run this, okay, it's randomly selected a number, an operation, and then another number, and then it's put the equals on the end of it there. And then obviously we could have our user type in um, their answer, so let's just do this as well. So, um, and we just have answer equals int input, Answer. So now if we run this, uh, 7 divided by 7 is 1, <laughs> I think. Okay, so there we go. So what we now need to do, so we need to take uh, make the program work this out. So we could, like I said before, we could do a load of if statements which um, you know take... Um, 
whatever is here and then works it out based on uh, this and that and the other. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to use uh, the evaluate statement and that will um, allow us to put our variables together. So just like we've done here, one, two and three, it allows us to put those three things together and it will um, uh, change them into a formula that Python can then work out and then we can print the answer out or we can compare the answer with the user's answer there. So let's just uh, have a look at this here then. So we need to um, uh, just give that a, um, a, a name. So I'll just call that x. And that will equal, this is going to be the eval part. So eval, so this is how we call the evaluate function. Now, I'm going to change everything into a string because this list here is saved as um, strings. I'm going to change the numbers into strings when I put this, but when they get evaluated, everything will be changed into a data type that Python can understand and evaluate. So although I'm putting them as strings now, um, when the evaluate kicks in, um, Python will do what it needs to do in order to work out the answer, which will be changing the numbers into uh, changing the string numbers into integers. Um, so let's have a look at this. So number one, and then we need to add the operation, um, which is saved under selection, and then str two, and then do we need a third? So when I run the program now, let's have a look at this. So we have uh, 9 times 3, 27, 27, and then we go from there. Um, so Python has the answer here. Um, let's just print x so we can see the answer as well, so you can actually see this working. So once I've given my answer, 5 times 5, 25, and then it prints the answer underneath it as well. So we can see here the Python is actually using the evaluate function to work out these um, strings and integers, putting it all together. So now we just need to add, instead of printing x there, um, we'll just add a, a simple if statement here. So we'll do that if x is the same as um, the answer that the user gives, We're going to print uh, correct, and then obviously we can move on. And then, but for everything else, we will just print wrong answer. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Um, and let's also print the correct answer here as well. So we just print the correct answer is, and then we just print out the x variable which contains the correct answer. So there we go. Um, right. So uh, let me close this so we actually see what's going on. So, okay. 3 divided by 6, uh, that's 2, okay, 75, so my maths is a little bit off there, but we can see here, let's try this again, so we get one wrong, 3 minus 3, okay, 0, okay, so we've got this one correct here, so obviously I got the first one wrong on intentionally, um, and it's not because it's really early, but um, we can see here that um, Evaluate is looking at these uh, strings, it's putting the whole thing together and it's making a sum out of it and then it's working the sum out, saving the answer into x and allowing us to use that as a comparison. So if you're making uh, like a random number game, so I could have this whole game um, repeat for 10 or 15 times if I wanted to, um, then, I, uh, then you would use the Evaluate function to actually um, you know, work. So I could use this to um, repeat the program or part of the program like 10 or 15 times, and I'd use the evaluate function to check the answer. So actually, let's just make this a little bit more in depth now. So if I wanted to, and this is a good little formatted tip as well, if you want to, if I want to create a loop now, obviously I can go and I need to indent all of this to be within a loop. If I just format an indent region, it'll put everything in for me. So I want um, for loop 
in range and this is going to be 10 I could do this as a while loop but I won't for loop in range and we have it repeat 10 times uh, we want this to happen so basically what should happen here is that every time the program runs um, we add one to loop until we get to 10 so it should ask us 10 questions so let's have a look so 4 plus 2 answer is 6 let's see 4 plus 2 answer is 6 aha so it is not generating a random number anymore but it is running for 10 times so um, every single time so this is the uh, this also needs to be run within the loop so let's uh, indent that region or oh, we can just copy that actually we'll cut it from there and we will just paste that in here because it just means that every single time the program runs the loop runs it selects a new random number and a new random uh, operation all the rest of it so let's run this again 5 plus 4 is 11 ah 11 Oh, of course it's not 5 plus 4 is 9. <laughs> three, 3 minus 4 is minus 1. Okay, and we can see here that now it's working. 4 minus 10 is 6. Oh my god, I'm having a terrible day of these sums. Uh, a little bit early for me anyway. But that is how it works. Let's just see. Let's just see if we just get to the right bit here. And there we go. So our uh, loop repeats this 10 times. It asks 10 random questions. Our evaluate works out the answer to those 10 random questions. And then depending on the answer and the answer that the user has given, it will either print correct or it will print um, wrong answer. The correct answer is this. Um, last thing we could do is we just add a little counter here as well. Um, I'm just gonna make that as a variable here at the top and make it equal to zero at the beginning. And then here, we're just going to do counter equals itself plus one if we get it correct. And then at the end, once we're done, we will print how many the user got right. So you got counter right. So this will tell the user how many they actually got right. So let's have a look at running this now. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's run this again. Uh, so, uh, five minus three is two. Ooh, uh, eight. And we'll just keep going until we get to the end here. And then at the bottom here, we can see it tells us that we have three right. So, that is a little introduction to using the evaluate function. Um, uh, we've used a lot of different uh, you know, bits of code here. There's random, there's a list here, there's a loop in range bit here. And um, it's, uh, like I say, just a short introduction into the evaluate code. So um, if you liked that, uh, make sure you have a look at my other lessons and um, hopefully you've got something out of that. So thanks a lot.